Lovers are said to have their hearts stolen, or seized by the object of their love, for the heart will go out from self and becomes fixed on the loved object. Thus, their heart or love is not for themselves, but for what they love. Accordingly, the soul can know clearly whether or not she loves God purely. If she loves Him, her heart or love will not be set on herself or her own satisfaction and gain, but on pleasing God and giving Him honor and glory. In the measure she loves herself, that much less she loves God. Whether the heart has been truly stolen by God will be evident in either of these two signs. If it has longings for God, or if it finds no satisfaction in anything but Him. As the soul demonstrates here, the reason is that the heart cannot have peace and rest while not possessing, and when it is truly attracted, it no longer has possession of self or of any other thing. And if it does not possess completely what it loves, it cannot help being weary in proportion to its loss until it possesses the loved object and is satisfied. Until this possession, the soul is like an empty vessel waiting to be filled or a hungry person craving for food or someone sick moaning for health or like one suspended in the air with nothing to lean on. Such is the truly loving heart. The soul experiencing this love exclaims, Why do you leave it so, that is empty, hungry, alone, sorely wounded, and sick with love, suspended in the air, and fail to carry off what you have stolen? That is why, why do you fail to carry off the heart you have stolen through love? And why do you fail to fill, satisfy, accompany, and heal it, giving its complete stability and repose in you? The loving soul, however great her conformity to the beloved, cannot cease longing for the wages of her love, for which she serves the beloved. Otherwise there would not be true love, for the wages of love are nothing else. Neither can the soul desire anything else than more love until perfect love is reached. Love is paid only with love itself, as the prophet Job brought out when he exclaimed with the same yearning and desire the soul has, just as the servant desires the shade and the day laborer waits for the end of his work. So I had empty months, and I counted the nights wearisome for myself. If I lie down to sleep, I shall say, When will the day come, that I might arise? Then again I turn to awaiting the evening, and I shall be full of sorrows till the darkness of night. The soul then, enkindled with love of God, yearns for the fulfillment and perfection of love, in order to have complete refreshment therein. As the servant, wearied by the summer heat, longs for the refreshing shade, and as the hireling awaits the end of his work, the soul awaits the end of hers. It is noteworthy that the prophet Job did not say the hireling was awaiting the end of his labor, but the end of his work, in order to indicate what we are explaining. That is, that the soul that loves does not await the end of her labor, but the end of her work. Her work is to love, and of this work, which is love, she awaits the end, which is the perfection and completeness of it. Until this work is accomplished, the soul is always in the condition of the picture Job paints in this passage. She considers her days and months empty, and counts her nights as long and wearisome. 
we explained and we have explained how the soul that loves God must not desire or hope for any other reward for her services than the perfect love of God.